let's discuss the popliteal fossa. Now, the popliteal fossa is the depression in the back of the knee. And on Mickey here, the center of that popliteal fossa would be the crease right here in the back of her knee. If we take a look at the model here, we can look at the osseous and ligamentous structures. So, osseous structures would be the femur, the tibia, and fibula, and then the deeper ligamentous structures would be the lateral collateral ligament, the medial collateral ligament, posterior aspect of the medial and lateral menisci, we have the posterior meniscofemoral ligament, and deep to that, the PCL, or posterior cruciate ligament. Let's talk about the structures that define the borders of the popliteal fossa. Now let's take a look at two muscles located in the floor of the popliteal fossa. We have the popliteus muscle and the plantaris muscle. The origin of the popliteus muscle is the distal posterior lateral aspect of the femur and it inserts on the proximal posterior medial aspect of the tibia. The plantaris also originates on the posterior aspect of the distal femur also the posterior lateral aspect of the distal femur, and it inserts further down, all the way down to the calcaneus. Now let's look at the borders of the popliteal fossa. As we can see, the fossa itself is almost like a diamond shape. If we look at the superior borders, Superior laterally, we have the biceps femoris, while superior medially, we have the semimembranosus, on top of that, the semitendinosus. If we look at the inferior borders, laterally, we have the lateral head of the gastrocnemius, while inferior medially, we would have the medial head of the gastrocnemius. So all these muscles combined form the borders of the popliteal fossa. So let's go over palpation of the popliteus and plantaris muscle. We'll start out with the popliteus. It's actually quite an easy muscle to find. You just need to go on the inside of the leg here, on the posterior medial aspect of the tibia. Wrap your fingers around, and with support hand, bring the foot right into lateral rotation here. Now, Mickey, I'm going to get you to basically take your foot, and you're going to go medially like this. One second here. Go ahead. Back. I'm just going to go in here a little bit deeper and actually kind of get a little snugger there. Yeah, there we go. There, that's starting to pop up. You feel that in there? Yes. Yeah. It can be a pretty sensitive area, so you got to be a little careful there. Now, when it comes to the plantaris, this is actually quite an easy one. All we're going to do is we're going to go to the popliteal fossa, we're going to go a little bit lateral, and then we're going to actually have Mickey go from uh, dorsiflexion into plantar flexion. Now. There we go. Feel that popping up there? Yeah. Hold it there. Back. And it just pops right up underneath your hand there. It's, it's actually quite easy to find. Excellent. So while we're here talking about the popliteal fossa, we should really talk a little bit about the pulse through the area. And we really want to make sure that we rule out things like deep vein thrombosis. And there's several things we need to do. The popliteal pulse is very, very easy to find. What you're going to do is you're actually going to take both hands right in behind the area here and send the pads of your fingers working between the two heads of the gastrocnemius, bring it up, it's fairly deep in here, and kind of get in there. You okay there, Mickey? Yeah. Not too sensitive? No. Okay, good. And right now I can actually feel the pulse with my index finger. So it's quite easy to find. Now, the standard test for actually looking and making sure that we don't have a problem with deep vein thrombosis is called Holman's test. To be honest, this test is not as accurate as we'd like to have other tests. So the test itself is just basically putting one hand underneath the calf muscle, bringing it into dorsiflexion, and then seeing whether or not the person actually cramps up. Now, in the test you see in some of the literature, they say squeeze the calf muscle. Well, if a person has a clot in here, this is not something you really want to do. Generally speaking, if you're suspecting deep vein thrombosis, you find an area that is swollen, a uh, little endemic in there, and you get it on the vein or artery and you're feeling a little bit of a nodule, this person needs to be sent in for some kind of a venous ultrasound. That's the best way to approach the situation. 